Hello, welcome to this next substance designer tutorial. In this tutorial, well, it's not so much a tutorial, it's about uh, one particular node, the curve node, and how you can use it to, you know, make some shapes and do good things. Uh, so we'll start off with a basic substance graph, and I'll click OK, and then, oops, let's pop that over there, and we're going to come in with a shape node. Now, for the curves node, I need a grayscale node. It can't be black and white, simply digital like that. It has to be some gray in it, or shades of gray in it anyway. So let's pick the shape, and we'll switch our shape over whoops, to, say, a paraboloid. There we go. OK, so we've got it nicely nicely uh, grayscale here so we've got white in the middle we've got black on the outside and you know we have variations of gray in between and what the curve node will do if i pop this in here and then plug it in um, is apparently nothing because you know by default it's just mapping color to co uh, sorry <laughs> uh, shade of gray to shade of gray uh, but you'll notice down here in the uh, properties we have this graph. Now in this graph what we can do is map colour to colour. So we have white here, so white at the bottom, white at the top. So white is mapping to white. And um, you know, we've got this black in the bottom, black in the uh, next to it. It's mapping black to black. So if I click into it, it's going to add a point which I will immediately delete. And then if I drag this up, you'll see it's gradually upping um, the you know level of white until it's completely white. So, and if I drag it off to the left, you'll see it shrinks everything down until it's pretty much black. It's got a little point in the middle there, but that's that. So, if I decide I want my very mid grey here, if I double click to add a point to be a different colour, uh, sorry, a different shade of grey, I can drag it down. And then we've got our curve handles, I can use that as well. I can move it further and further over here. So instead of changing the mid grey, now I'm changing this grey at, say, 0.25. I can shorten my things there and you'll see I start to get steps and why is that good well basically we can create from this a um, a panel say a wood panel a frame panel and if I plug this into our height map down here I'm just going to switch over to the high uh, high res plane and then go to materials edit default sorry materials default edit and i'm going to uh, update my tessellation and just increase my height scale now it might look like nothing's happening uh, but that's because the shading's not terrific so i'm going to plug that into there into the normal and then i'm going to press space and type amb for ambient, we'll pick the HBAO. If I plug that in there and that in there, it should start to become a little more visible. This is uh, perhaps not quite there yet. There we go. Now we can see it a little bit better. Okay, so the more points I add onto this, the more curves I'm going to get. So if I add another point here, and perhaps one there you'll see i'm starting to get like a stepped um feature you know some of the you would almost get carved into a, a decorative wood panel and let's pop one more up here there we go so i've done them all more or less in a positive manner uh, but we can actually take them below so now i can carve bits out to you know make more and more uh, patterns okay so that is essentially the curves node and we're going to do one more 
bit of an example with it we're going to put a frame around this um, so we'll do that in the next little section so I'll talk to you then okay so uh, ignore this here that's me messing about let me double click there uh, what I want to do now is put a frame around this so I'm going to select the original paraboloid and I'm going to take the scale down a bit so it's sort of sitting in the center of our uh, of our of our type you know of our texture square there we go and now we can put a frame around this so for a frame uh, and I've tried this several ways but I think this is the nicest I've tried um, I'm going to press space and type in gradient and I want a gradient linear one now this gradient linear one is going to form the top the bottom the left and the right of our frame uh, but we need to manipulate it first so first I'm going to add a transform 2d node I'll plug those together and then I'm going to set the height to say 10% so this gives us like repeating bars which is not what I want I want a single bar so what we need to go is to tiling mode and then the method of inheritance and absolute and set the, the mode to no tiling so now I've got a single bar which is perfect it's just in the wrong place so for that we can update our, our y value here and uh, if I set this to somewhere around four that's not quite there uh, so let's go four and a half there we go okay so we've got the top of our frame and now we can mirror this to the bottom so we'll grab uh, that node there and drag out a noodle and let go and type in mirror so we've got mirror grayscale and if I click on it set the mirror axis to Y we've now got the top and bottom of our frame so that's great but we need the left and the right now and rather than doing all this again but just for the vertical bars I'm just going to rotate this round so let me drag that out to a transform node and then in the angle we'll type in 90 and now I can blend these together so let's pop that one in the bottom and that one in the top and a good mode for this um, I found is max line so then we get this nice you know square frame it's got kind of a bevel at the corner you know it looks pretty good okay so I'm just going to drag my curves here just bring it level and then I'm going to select it and control D just so I've got something to start with I'm going to plug that in and if I double click on that you'll see now I've got a nice gradient of you know steps in our frame which we can then combine with our original little round piece here so let's pop in a blend and I'll drag that into there add that into there and we'll set the mode to add there we go so you'll see that my round piece is overlapping a little bit so I'll just grab this scale and bring it in just a little bit if I double click on this node and leave it double clicked instead of doing what I normally do which is to double click everything it will uh, visualize if I just single click on this one so I'm just going to bring it in a little bit so that it uh, you know doesn't overlap too much or at all uh, then we can redirect our outputs from here by pressing shift left click drag and drop into our new blend and now we have a frame in our uh, in our piece uh, although I haven't redirected this one for some reason so I'll drag and drop that down there if you worried why I paused there it was my slight confusion as to why the frame wasn't uh, displacing okay so that's about that really except to say you know up here we can obviously change our uh, curve node to you know do almost what we want and you know if you want to change it wholesale you can select more than one 
uh, of these nodes at a time and move them up and you should be able to see in the preview you know the effect that's having on our displacement so that's the curve node essentially uh, as well as a couple of other nodes uh, but that's what uh, one of the things you can do with it and I think it's really useful and I hope you do too uh, I hope you got something nice out of this and uh, I hope to talk to you again in another video